Hey, Integrated All-Stars. We're going to be taking a look today at the 1.7 Ready, Set, Go. Let's go. Talking about recursive formulas, arithmetic sequences, geometric, explicit equations, all that good stuff. I hope you're having a great day. Let's get into it. 1.7 has the ready, starting with distinguishing arithmetic and geometric sequences. We've been seeing this for quite a few sections now. I believe we first started seeing those terms in 1.2 with arithmetic sequences, which recall is when we're just adding or subtracting from one term to get to the next term. So for example, if I had the sequence one, three, five, seven, this is an arithmetic sequence because we're just adding two to every term in order to get the next term. And in that case, we would say that two is considered our common difference. And, you know, we can make an equation based out of what we see here. Uh, for the geometric sequence, this is when we are multiplying or dividing to get our next term. So, for example, we might have one, and then we have three, and then we have nine, and then 27. Where hopefully we can see we're multiplying the previous term by how much? Hopefully you're saying by three. And similar to the common difference, but not quite, um, we can achieve our common ratio. So another big term here. We can achieve our common ratio if we take the next term and put it over the previous, which in this case, I could put three over one or I could choose this nine over this three. And if this holds up, which it does, it's positive three. If this holds up for every term as we move forward, then we have a geometric sequence. All right, so let's get into it. I see for, I'll definitely do problem one and problem three. Oh, you know what? I'll do one and two. Keep it simple. This is jumping from five to 10 to 15. It looks as if they're just adding how much? Just adding five. Simple enough. So in this case, we have a common difference because we just keep adding five. And this is considered arithmetic because again, there's a common difference. The common ratio isn't too important because that keeps fluctuating. Um, we never get a common ratio that's consistent. So that's why we don't need the ratio part here. Uh, we can fill this in to get 20, fill in this to get 35, boom. For two, this is jumping from 20 to 10 and then jumping again and then going to 2.5. So you got some options here and sometimes it's good to you know, test these things. So if you were going to think of this as arithmetic, ideally, this would keep just subtracting 10, subtracting 10, subtracting 10. But hopefully you pump the brakes real quick. Don't slam into anything. If you do 10 and you deduct 10, that's zero. Zero, zero minus 10 is not 2.5. So in that case, since we can't just subtract and subtract and subtract to get the next number in the sequence, this is going to have to have a common ratio, which we can achieve if we take our next term, which is 10, put it over 20. We can simplify that to just positive one half. Boom. And this would have to be geometric. And if we wanted to get this term here, this would be 10 times 1 half, which is just 5. 
to get this next term here, we would be taking half of 2.5, which is just 1.25. And again, I would get that if I did 2.5 and multiplied with the fraction of one half or just divided by two. That's another thing you can do. That should work for those two. We then start to kick in with our set recursive and explicit equations, determine whether the given information represents an arithmetic, which again is just adding and adding and adding or subtracting, 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 or geometric, which deals with multiplication or division. This might be a good way to have symbols associated. Okay, so two, four, six, eight, who do we appreciate? This is just adding two, check you out. I'm smart like you. It's just adding two, so it's arithmetic. Our first term is two. I think it's helpful in words to talk about what's going on here where we're taking our previous term So for example, if our previous term was two, how's this jumping to four? Our current term, what's changing? Hopefully you're saying you would just be adding two. So in this case, you would have f of x equals our previous, which we denote as f of x minus one, and then just add two outside that, round the outside, round the outside. Does that make sense so far? Did I mention you can pause the video if you're stuck on anything and it won't lose points or anything? Explicit, we need two things here. We're gonna need our zero term, which sounds odd, but recall that two would be considered our first term, which we kind of denoted right here. So if we're going back to our previous term, and sometimes you got to give a little bit of space, but think, how can we go backwards? If we're going back to another previous term, how can we go back? Hopefully you're saying you would just subtract two, which would get you zero. And we see that if we move to the right, it still fulfills that pattern that we think is going to happen, where we just keep adding two to the previous. All right. So in words, I would say something to the effect of starting at zero. So we're starting with zero. We add two. So we add two for every X term. So for every X term, that means that we should have these two multiply because every time that we have an additional X, we add another increment of two. All right, so we see here, this is the wording and this is the equation we would use. We can actually take this further because anytime we add zero, we're just adding nothing. So you can just write two X. Next bit. Uh, what's going on here? This is looking similar, two to four, eight to 16, but are we always adding two to the next bit or something else? Hopefully you're saying you're multiplying two. So multiply two, which means it's gonna be geometric, again, because we're using multiplication. And f of one is two, and we're taking the previous term which is denoted as f of x minus one, get familiar with this. It's gonna come back again and again. And we're just multiplying that by two. For the explicit, we need to go back. What's our zero term gonna be? I say zero term or the beginning. Zero term, well, if we are Multiplying to the right, we can go backwards and divide by two. So two over one, we'll just leave you with one. 
So no matter what, we're starting with one. And then sometimes I get stuck here with what's going on. So I'll sketch out a table where I'll call this X and this is F of X. The explicit sometimes has more of a trick to it. So our zero term was one, first term was two, second term was four, third term was eight. Might be okay for now. I see that this is just one on its own. This is one version of two. This is one version of four, but we could also express that as two being squared. This is one version of two being cubed. And so hopefully we see this pattern where if we're at, I don't know, give me a variable, or if we're just at n, where n's any number, we just have one outside, two in parentheses, and then n as our exponent, all right? So we can rewrite this in parentheses with our variable now, just change to x. And we can actually simplify this because we don't need the one outside. So we could just write 2x. Does that make sense? There's a lot going on here. I uh, hope you have been pausing the video to double check, make sure everything sounds okay. Skip those. Let's dive into some of the wordy situations. All right. Let's talk about Scott. Scotty boy. Scott decides to run or add running to his exercise routine. I wonder if this is the same Scott from 1.5 with the push ups. Runs a total of one mile his first week. He plans to double the number of miles he runs each week. So let's set this up as what week we're working with. And we'll have the other side as the miles ran that week. All right, so he plans to run a total of one mile his first week, double the number of miles he runs each week. So at week two, he's doing two, which is two versions of that one. On week three, he's doing four, which is two squared times that one. You'll see that I start to use exponents here because it's, it's something we should consider. Um, since we're using exponents, this is gonna be geometric for the recursive, we're running one mile. We're then taking the previous term, multiplying that by two, because we're doubling. Doubling is a big word here. All right, and then explicit, I think we already did this. This was, yeah. This is something I'm pretty sure we already did, but I'll entertain it anyway. Well, all right, explicit, that's fine. Uh, what do we notice? As we keep burning through this, you know when we get to week four, it's gonna be 16. So at week four, we got 16. How can we rewrite that using exponents? Hopefully you're saying as, or sorry, eight, eight, eight. So that should be eight, my bad. So this would be eight, this is two to the third, right? I mean, you can keep these patterns going forever if you want, that's kind of the beauty of it. But at some point you have to say, what is this pattern gonna be? And so hopefully we see a pattern where if this keeps going to n weeks, this will be equal to two, but look at our exponent here because on week five, there's only four versions of the two. At week four, there's only three versions of, two, of the two multiplying by itself. So this should actually be n minus one for our exponent. So explicit wise, two to the n minus one. If you went back and said that week zero was gonna have 0.5, 
that's good. You can do that. If you wrote 0.5 or one half mile, that's fine. Uh, yeah, that's good. Plot and label the two points on the graph, draw all the line segment. This is approaching slope, which we've seen previously in 1.5. So just plotting these two out. Point A is gonna be two, negative one. And B is four, two. If I map out from A to B, I'll zoom in on this so you can actually see what I'm doing. So again, I just started out by mapping out these two points. That's simple enough. Two negative one right here. If I go over one, I'm right under the B. So we can call this our run as just plus one. These should be terms that you've heard of before with slope. And then if I wanted to bounce up, we could say that our rise is one, two, three. And it's positive three. And so collectively, if we're going for the slope, we refer to this as our rise over our run, which in this case is positive three over positive one, which we can simplify to just positive three for that slope. All right, so that's that first one. What's the next bit asking? Then sketch out on the graph how you count the slope of the line by drawing a vertical line and then a horizontal line from one point to the other. Yeah, we already did that. Um, we'll draw the line segment between them too because that's being asked of us. So use a straight line for this if you can. Nah, it's not that good. It gets weird when I'm trying to make the line, but I'll do my best with this line tool. Yeah, that's close enough. That'll work. So again, it's going through it. I don't know what they want me to do with these slopes. What does it say? Oh, and the slope. Yeah, so plot and label the two points on the graph, draw the line segment between them, then sketch on the graph how you count the slope of the line. Yeah, I mean, this part, the three over, I mean, if this was a slope of three halves, we could start at, I don't know, any point really. We could start here. Our run is always in the denominator. And then our rise is up top. So we would run two, one, two, look at you, then go up one, two, three. So this would be over two, up three. So in comparison, which of these do you think is steeper? Hopefully you're saying this one is steeper. That should help, right? Okay, uh, it's the same kind of thing with the others. They're written as a fraction, so that's pretty helpful. Following two points, plot and label, then count the slope, count the rise and the run. We already kind of did this, but I'll entertain it. C is gonna be negative three, zero. So we're over one, two, three in the X direction. And then D, zero, five, going up here. If I map this run, one, two, three, it's a positive three for my run. And then up one, two, three, four, five. So this is positive five. Five thirds is gonna be my slope. Pretty neat, right? I'll do one more. E is gonna be at negative two, negative one. So this is point E, point N is negative four, four, right here. 
And if we map it out, I'm going to go from the top to the bottom. Hope that's okay with you. So I always keep my run positive. So in this case, I'm going to say my run is positive two. And then if I drop it like it's hot, go down one, two, three, four, five, we would actually say that our rise in this case is negative five. So in this case, our rise over our run, negative five halves, boom. Another way you could have counted this out. Is there another way? You could have also done the rise first, which is still negative five. Nothing's going to change there. And then run would still be positive two. So it's another way you could go about it. I hope that this video was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching.